Hello, I'm Darren McGain. Today's question asks if I would discuss sadistic behaviours and traits, a sadistic personality. Now, if you like this video, if you find it helpful or interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel. But just as a reminder, this video is not a substitute for support from a mental health professional, nor is it a tool to be used to diagnose someone. Now, sadistic personality disorder was introduced to the DSM back in 1987, but it was later dropped from DSM-4 and it's no longer part of DSM-5. The difficulty can be distinguishing sadistic personality disorder from other forms of personality disorders due to the high level of comorbidity and other disorders. However, there has been renewed interest in, in sadism as a personality trait, again because of its association and its comorbidity with other personality disorders. For instance, I've previously made a video on the dark triad, a subclinical combination of psychopathy, narcissism and Machiavellianism. Recent research suggests that sadism joins with subclinical psychopathy, narcissism and Machiavellianism to form what's being referred to as the dark tetrad. And what I mean is, for example, with narcissism, what we often see are vindictive behaviours, especially when a narcissistic person is feeling emotionally wounded. That vindictiveness can manifest itself sadistically. Also, with psychopathy, we often see a lack of remorse over pain being inflicted on others. But what is it we mean by sadistic? Well, it could be characterised by someone who derives pleasure when imposing pain, distress, discomfort on others. They enjoy their victim's distress through their acts of aggression. There could be acts of violence, aggression, intimidation, destruction of personal property. There could be deliberate neglect, knowing that their victim will suffer. There could be sabotaging or giving impossible tasks and expectations, setting their victims up to fail so that they can be punished. Now, all of us have hurt someone in one way or another, even those closest to us. But in these cases, it could maybe be out of ignorance. We didn't know what we were doing was hurtful to that person. It could be what we do when we feel threatened, you know, or we're being hurt somehow. We lash out aggressively. Or it could be in the heat of an argument. However, the difference is we tend to feel regret. We apologise. We regulate our behaviour not to do the same thing again. A sadistic personality is different in the following ways. There is an intention to harm. Enjoying inflicting pain and discomfort on others, there can be a lack of regret, not taking any responsibility, and it is continual. There are different kinds of sadistic behaviours. There's Verbal, now that would include shouting, insulting, threatening, dominating. There can be physical sadism, that would be violence, physical acts of violence. There could be sexual acts that involve domination, things like bondage, choking, slapping and so on. There can be vicarious sadism, now that could be a pleasure that is derived through seeing others being attacked, assaulted, humiliated, tortured, whatever. There can even be fantasising about hurting others or just maybe watching violent movies and enjoying the violence that's being inflicted on the characters. The sadism, the bullying, can take different forms, but according to Theodore Millen, there are four subtypes of sadistic personality. I'm going to outline them right now. So the first one is spineless sadism. Now this, I believe anyway, could be very closely associated with covert narcissism. As venomous as they are, the spineless sadist gets their power usually through tormenting a scapegoat, someone they see as weaker than them, someone that maybe won't stand or can't stand up for themselves. They could usually be part of a larger group and rely on the power of that group to protect them. Now, common behaviours could be inflicting some kind of humiliation, some kind of pain on someone. If the victim stands up to them, the victim is then threatened by the whole group or they use that whole group to threaten their victim. They could be more manipulative. They may just perhaps tell that biggest, most powerful, most violent person in the group that someone has badmouthed them. Then they enjoy watching that person being threatened or physically assaulted. Now, this type of sadistic person would tend to have a lot of avoidant features. They would tend, they may pretend to be brave, but they tend to be quite insecure and cowardly. Secondly, there's the tyrannical sadist. Now, 
They force others to submit and cower through menace and through brutality. They tend to be very negative and scathing towards pretty much everything. They scorn and insult everything. Common behaviours could include being destructive, accusatory, surly, abusive and abrasive. They can be both. They act in a way that's both inhumane and unmerciful. Thirdly, there's enforcing sadism. Now, this is characterised by the hostility, the vitriol, the terror, all that stuff that's being inflicted is perhaps in the public interest. In other words, it is justified. Now, this could be people in positions of responsibility, such as a manager in law enforcement or, or in a caring profession. And a really good fictional example of that, I think, would be Nurse Ratched from the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, uses the rules to dominate and humiliate the patients under her care. Or these days, I suppose, a real life example um, could be someone who demands the cancelling of someone they perhaps just don't agree with. Not just did they platform them, but actually destroy their lives to destroy their income, their livelihood, and indeed anyone associated with them. And they can go back through years of social media posts, interviews, trying to find something that they can be outraged by, or they can be outraged by on behalf of someone else. And sometimes this type of sadist may claim to be a social justice warrior, which can be very difficult, even unhelpful to those who are genuinely trying to highlight an injustice or debate something that they believe needs to change for the better. This kind of sadist just wants to destroy. But the common behaviours and characteristics of this type could include being pitiless, being coarse, actively seeking out rule breakers. They control and punish through being merciless and believe that their position, their ideology gives them the right. Their targets are beyond redemption. Lastly, there's explosive sadism. Now this could be characterized by unpredictable outbursts of uncontrollable fury and rage. They can be both physical and verbal attacks as pent up feelings of unfairness, humiliation, frustration, or discharge. Now, Millen suggested that this type has features of borderline personality and that they can actually be quite contrite afterwards. So that is a brief outline of sadistic personality, characteristics and traits, and indeed the four subtypes. As always, there's so much more to cover. I could probably do a whole series on this if I were to go more in depth. But as always, if you have any comments on anything I may have missed, please feel free to use the comment box below. As always, there are some interesting observations and conversations starting around these videos. If you like this video, if you find it helpful or useful, please consider subscribing to my channel for future updates on mental health related topics. And until next time, thanks for watching.